everybody and welcome to my kitchen it is tuesday and i am here with a special guest today i have my mom here and she is going to be helping me in the kitchen today as we make our no tomato tomato well no tomato sauce over a spaghetti squash right so you want to say hi hello everybody <laughs> <laughs> so much of what i've learned i've learned from my mom uh, we grew up cooking in the kitchen, and she showed us a lot of the techniques that we grew up we grew up knowing. Don't forget your so, dad. <laughs> and my dad, too. Yes, turned into be a very excellent cook. <laughs> Big con contribution. So he was the Italian side of the family, so hence uh, a lot of Italian, a lot of garlic in our cooking, right? right. Um, and we got a little bit of German on that side, other side, too, just to balance things out. So what we're going to do today is... First, we're going to start prepping our spaghetti squash. And I know a lot of you had asked, how the heck do you make a spaghetti squash? Especially when it starts out like this, right? So we're gonna get started on this, and then we're gonna move on to making the sauce. So first thing you do, get a spaghetti squash, right? So we, we went out to the farmer's market this week and got ourselves some squash, and um, I started cutting through this because sometimes cutting through a spaghetti squash is a little difficult. You saw me doing that earlier, right? <laughs> it wasn't pretty. Um, so I did start with this one. This one is not huge. It's, it's probably a, a medium-sized squash, so it's a good one to go with. It will probably take about 25, 30 minutes to cook at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I'm doing, I'm just going to cut it right in half. And you'll see, just like any other squash, it's filled with uh, the seeds, which I like to save and roast later on. Um, I did do some earlier, and I'll show that to you. But I'm going to pass this on to my mom, who offered to scoop out those seeds. And you'll see what I like to use, since I don't use my ice cream scoop for much these days, I like to use it for actually scooping out the seeds of the squash. It works makes good. It, makes it work pretty easily. Yeah, I know. It's got a nice sharp edge on it so that it helps take it out. Later on, what I'll do is I'll clean those out. I'll take the seeds away from the strings and clean them off so that they look something like this. And then what I'll do is I'll bake them in the oven like eight minutes at 400 degrees. I like to add seasonings like cinnamon to it, a little bit of salt to it, and I love it. So while my mom is doing this, I thought I would move on to making the sauce. And the base for the sauce in this case is getting that nice red color. And I'm going to show you the puree that we made, we both made up yesterday. And this is the pureed, it's a beet, carrot, and turnip combination. So you're probably wondering how you get from the beet, carrot, and turnip to this. First thing you want to do is have more carrots than beets and turnips, okay? So the ratio is probably about three to four carrots to whatever ratio of your turnip and beets are. So... I had, I cut up one beet, I had a small beet here, and I cut up uh, into about one inch dice. They don't have to be small, small, but what we wanna do is we wanna have our pieces approximately the same size. So when I cut up my carrot, now this is an organic carrot, I actually cleaned it off and scraped it. It's been sitting here, so it got a little dried out on the outside. But if it's an organic carrot, I don't tend to peel it. I'll just use a scrub brush and kind of scrub the outsides of it. How are we doing on that squash? Hey, I'm about to take the cooked one out. Okay. And put our... Don't burn your hands. <laughs> put one in. Excellent. All right. So we have baked one ahead of time, and it's ready and waiting for us to use later on and we'll show you how that works. So, I'm going to continue cutting these up. While I'm doing that, my mom is going to start heating up the pot that we're going to use for the sauce. And you can see, 
the pot that we're using is a Dutch oven, but if you have a large pot or a soup pot, that could work as well. All right, so typically you start on a high heat, and then um, when it comes to temperature, you can turn it down to a medium high or medium. Now, I'm cutting up this last carrot of mine, and these chunks are a little bit bigger than what I have for the others. So on those that are have a large diameter, I'm just going to cut those in half. As I said, so that we keep everything pretty consistent in size because I want them to cook all at the same time. I'm going to be boiling these for about a half hour, 35 minutes. And when they're done, I want to be able to just have a fork pierce each piece, whether it's a beet or whether it's a carrot, and have them all evenly cooked through. I just saw a couple of pieces here that I'm actually going to put into quarters because they're a little bit bigger. So you can see, I, I have about a half cup of beet here, and I have about two, little more than two cups of um, carrots here. I want to have about the same amount of beets and carrot, uh, sorry, turnips and beets together. So I also wanted to show you, this is a turnip. So when I was going, I went to Trader Joe's and I asked them if they had turnips, they didn't have turnips. They kind of looked at me like, why would you want a turnip? This is the reason, because it tastes great. It has a great flavor that adds, that you can add to a dish. You can roast them. Um, you can boil them in the case that we're doing right here. But it has a very distinctive flavor. And it was funny, as I was checking out, the checkout girl actually asked me, what are you going to do with that? And I told her, and she said, well, how do you cook it? Well, first thing you need to do is peel it. And it's such a shame because I, I don't like to get rid of this beautiful purple color because, as we know, color indicates health when it comes to fruits and vegetables. It's a sign that antioxidants and phytonutrients are present. But in this case, I'm taking off that outer covering. They do tend to be a little bit dirty. They grow close to the ground. And when I'm cutting any kind of root vegetable, what I'll do is I'll take this top end off, slice it off, and the bottom. There's not much on this one here, but I'm just going to shave it off a little bit. And then just get that last bit of skin off. And again, I want to get the sizes about the same as the other vegetables here. So I'm going to cut it in half. All right. And I'm going to come down. And then I'm going to take it again. And I'm going to cut it into quarters. So I'm ending up with something that's cut like this. Okay, all right, here we go. Maybe you can see it better down there. And then I'm going to turn it, turn the turnip, and slice it through again. <laughs> you like my humor? <laughs> okay, and then when I'm done, I'm actually going to turn it sideways again. I just keep turning it sideways and sideways until I have little cubes. And I'm just going to finish up with this turnip. And I'm going to repeat the process with the other half. Remember, I cut it down once, turn it, cut it down again. So they're about three quarters of an inch square when it, we're all said and done. There we go. Okay. Now, what I will do with the turnips, the beets, and the carrots, so I have a little bit more turnip here than beet, and you know what, that would be okay. It, it doesn't, I'm thinking that that's probably just fine. If you have too many beets, your sauce is gonna be very, very red, like beet red. The carrots kind of temper it down and make it more red, so it looks more like a tomato sauce. So, what I will do with this 
is put it into a saucepan. And I'm just going to grab my saucepan out here so you're not. While I'm browning the turkey. While mom is browning the turkey. So she has started browning the turkey. Uh -huh. So when we do the sauce, we start out making our puree. All right. Our squash is in the oven. That's good. I'm going to let this boil. The squash and the, the, squash and the sauce puree are going to take about the same amount of time. I'm going to put my veggies into the pot and just cover it with enough water that everything is covered and get that boiling for about a half hour to 35 minutes. And then I'm going to check it to make sure that it's fork tender. All right, I'm gonna just put this to the side. Okay, and let's check in and see how the sauce is going. So, to start off with the sauce, we're going to, to brown our turkey and we're going to add in a about a quarter cup of onion, which is which, okay, which we now have in. And what else, Mom? Celery. And celery. So we're gonna add in about two stalks of celery chopped up. And they were chopped up more finely than what I just did before. So probably, you know, in quarter, three eighths kind of dice. Uh, so it's not a fine dice, but it's not huge chunks like I was doing because I was boiling the other vegetables. So while that is going, we're going to want to saute the turkey with the celery and the onions until the onions just start to get a little bit uh, soft. How are we doing? Is it getting a little bit light? A little, a little bit more. more. Okay. So I got to keep talking, right? <laughs> While that is going on, let me tell you what else we're going to be putting into our sauce. So, we are going to be adding in a lot, a lot of spices, all right? We have here some basil and some salt and pepper. We have some turmeric. The turmeric is going to be great for this because it has a little bit of yellow which balances out that beet red color, which makes it more of a tomatoey color. It also adds a nice subtle flavor to the sauce. So we're going to add in, and I'll tell you the amounts, um, oh, I could tell you the amounts right now if you want. So this is about a teaspoon of basil. I have about a half teaspoon each. Let me show you. So this is our basil. Isn't this clever? We put everything out on plates to make it easier. And I think we can give it, hand it back. Okay, so a teaspoon of basil. See, she's keeping me on track. Still does, right? Okay, we've got half a teaspoon of our ground black pepper and I have some Himalayan sea salt here. We've got a half teaspoon of turmeric. Look how nice and rich and yellow that is. That's gonna add a nice color. All right. We have, um, I have to check and see what this, oh, our oregano, of course. So we have about a half or a quarter teaspoon of oregano. And can, the best part about this is we can later on add more in if we want more flavor to come out. I have a homemade blend of Italian spices, but you can just buy an Italian spice mix. And I have about, about a half tablespoon of that, so about a teaspoon and a half of that that goes in and then some marjoram just happened to have some marjoram that i dried from my garden over the summer and i'm so happy to be able to use it so about a half teaspoon of the marjoram and then of course every italian dish lots of garlic so we've got about two uh cloves of garlic just really finely chopped here all right And then, last but not least, we have about a quarter of a teaspoon of celery salt. Just to up that celery flavor. All right. All right, so what we want to do now is we just want to saute the, see I shouldn't block my mom there. <laughs> saute the um, spices in with the meat and the, on, uh, onion and celery 
and just like get those blending a little bit. While that's going on, I am going to chop up some additional ingredients. One of those is our mushrooms. So I have, I'm hoping to, to cut up about two cups of mushrooms here. And I actually wash these ahead of time. Um, and I'm just going to do a rough chop of these. Not too small, I don't want them to melt into the, the dish, but you know, small enough so that you know when you're putting on top of a spaghetti, it's not kind of too chunky. I have about a dozen of the white peppers, uh, white, white mushrooms here. Now, you might ask, why would you bother doing this without tomatoes? And one of the reasons is that there are several people who have sensitivities to foods called nightshades. And these foods in particular, they belong to a certain family of foods, of plants, that um, some people find very difficult to digest. And I had done this just because I was very curious as to what um, this might taste like, but I actually really like it. Um, it has a great flavor and it gives me a chance to eat some foods that normally I might not, like the beets and the turnips. So I encourage you in your day-to-day -day recipes to try and explore and expand the foods that you eat because variety is very important. It's just as important as the quality of those foods that you're eating. All right, so I have here a rough chop, probably about, uh, it's, it's a generous two cups, but I think we're, we're good with that. What do you think, Mom? Does that look fine? Good? All right. You know what, maybe, you know what, should we show everybody what it looks like so far? Here, let me just grab the, I have, here, I've got the pot holders in here. All right. Ah, no, we're good. Very brown. So, well, so it's browning, but if it's browning, what we can do is just add a little bit of liquid, liquid to it. We'll just add a little bit of water in. I should have left this over here for you. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, not a problem. You know, that's what happens. We kind of go with the, the flow, and um, it actually is going to taste great. It's going to have a great flavor to it. All right. You can probably up the temperature on it again. And you know what? We're going to add in the mushrooms too because when they sweat, that will also add a little bit more liquid to it as well. So I'm going to just add that in. Excellent. And at the same time, I am going to then chop up or slice a few black olives. These are just canned olives. How are we doing? Great. Okay, good. Doing fine. All right. I'm just going to slice these. Now you can buy the your olives pre-sliced if you'd like. You can add more if you like olives. I'm keeping the amount of olives back here because not everybody likes olives in their dish. All right, part of the Mediterranean diet though, very good for us, very healthy. All right, excellent, thank you. All right, so now we have, you can see a variety of different vegetables going into this dish. We've got our, we've got our um, carrots, our beets, our turnips, our celery, our onion, lots of different things, mushrooms, also very healthy, very good for us, and our olives. We want to now add in that puree. Now, this is going to be the base that makes it look pretty much like a tomato sauce that we know. And remember, I had cut up those vegetables. What I ended up doing, once they were cooked and, sauce, and soft, I put them into my food processor and just processed it until it was nice and smooth and creamy. Let me just show you. Like this. All right. Now, as you're doing that, you may find that it's a little bit 
thick, you can add back some of the liquid that it was cooked in. So I usually, I drain the vegetables, put them, at, um, put them into the food processor, do a little pulsing, add a little liquid until it's the desired consistency that you saw here. Okay, let's see. And we're just going to pour that in. Oops, we should be on the other side of each other, I think. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Good. That is probably what, what I, this is a half batch of all of those vegetables. I meant to mention that. It's about two cups. So you want to add about two cups of puree. And depending on how much liquid you add back in, that batch that I made makes about four cups. Yes. And we can add, thank you. And if it's too thick, we could which also add in, which is, yes. her. we'll add in, I don't know. we didn't have very much. <laughs> so we're going to add in, let me show them the thickness of this right now. Okay. All right. It was not hot, was it? No. 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 Okay. So you can see now the consistency. Pretty thick right now. So for a sauce, we want to have it a little bit more smooth. So we're going to add in, if you have more broth, you can add in broth. I'm going to add in some water because there's going to be a lot of flavor in this. I did add the last of some vegetable broth that I had. And I would say we probably added in about a cup, cup and a half of liquid at this point. We're going to stir that all around. We're not done yet we have something, we want to give it a little zing. So you know how tomatoes have a little bit of acidity to them. Well, we're going to add in some of that acidity with some apple cider vinegar. We're going to add in about a tablespoon. Grab a tablespoon. There we go. Of that. And just add it right, oh, this is half a tablespoon, so I have two. It looked a little small. Okay. All right. So we've got that going. This reminds me of when I was a kid and we'd come into the kitchen and mom would be cook cooking at the stove and the kitchen would just smell so good. So bringing back good memories here. <laughs> maybe not for you. Maybe you have to get all the work you had to do. Worth it. We're putting Outside. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. So we're almost done. Now, we just want to add in a little bit of heat in the form of some red pepper flakes. So, I'm just going to add in a generous pinch. And we're going to add a little bit more. So, we, we did make this dish last night together, and um, we added a little bit of red pepper flakes. I just added in a little bit more, but hopefully that wasn't too much. So... All right, so we are now in the home stretch, right? We can put a lid on that. We'll turn it down and let it simmer for about 20 minutes to half hour. This is a time for all those don't the seasonings. Don't forget to stir it. And, oh, don't forget to stir it. Yeah, that's the worst part. So occasionally give it a stir. We don't want anything to burn on the bottom. So now is the time. It's blending. It's Those flavors are going to really meld and be wonderful. So while that's going, let me show you how to make that spaghetti squash, right? So assuming now that our spaghetti squash has been baking for a half hour, the way we know it's done is we can take a fork and just here, let's put it right here. How's that? Perfect. Get rid of some of our mess. And by our mess, I mean me. <laughs> okay, so here's our squash. Let me just hold it up. This is the way it comes out of the oven. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour, put it, my fork in and see, oop, it is soft. So I know that it's done. I'll turn it over. And now this one isn't hot. It's been cooling. But I wanted to show you what the surface looks like. All right, so you can actually see here that there's some strings that are there. Let me grab a bowl.
and show you how to actually make spaghetti out of this squash. It's very simple. You'll find that the strings run in a, the direction this way, right? Across. And what I want to do then is I just want to rake it across the bottom of the squash. And I'm just going to take out a little bit here to show you how it actually looks like spaghetti. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that in right now. And you go through and do the entire spaghetti squash. Last night, we had a half spaghetti squash like this, and it fed three of us. So, depending on how much. What's nice about this is it's a low-carb alternative to pasta, gluten-free. So if you're going gluten-free, low-carb, this is the way to go, right? You can put a little bit of salt and pepper on that if you'd like. Let me just grab a little. Yeah, yeah, if you would, that'd be good. Put a little pepper on. Oh, and we wanted to get some parsley as a garnish. Oops, I put the pepper already. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little salt on that. Now, I had put oil on the top of this, so there's a little bit of oil in there already. So we probably don't even need to put anything in there along those lines. And this was the sauce. All right? we I like it a little chunky. If you like it a little bit more of a, a, a soupy sauce, then by all means, add more of the broth or liquid. Here, let me show you. Do a little spoon of it. I like it nice and chunky. We used to have a chunkier, I think, growing up too. And I'm just gonna, whoops, got a little drip there. But, You can see, I'm just move that out of the way. Let me grab some parsley. And I would grab Parmesan cheese. <laughs> oh, we didn't grate any Parmesan cheese, but we do have some really good Parmesan cheese. Now, I, I'm dairy free, so I, I always forget. Um, I don't miss it, but if you are dairy free, you could put a little bit of nutritional yeast on top of this. You can mix it in with your uh, squash as well, but uh, there's nothing better than a good grating of Parmesan cheese. So, all right, here we go. Let me show you the finish. All right, what do we think? Bravo! Yay! <laughs> all right, come on over here. Come on over here. There we go. So, there we are from the both of us. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know if you try it. This is a great anti-inflammatory way to eat. As you know, I like to talk about anti-inflammatory foods and the health benefits that we have from going back to eating unprocessed foods that uh, have natural nutrients and phytonutrients in them that keep us young and essentially aging slower. So until next week, I hope you get to try this. Please send a comment in the comment box if you have a question, or if you make it, let me know. Let me know what you think. And I hope this kind of pushes your, your uh, limits to try something new. All right, bye-bye for now.